building an indie business in the center of venture capital. I am Alex Edmonds. People on the internet call me Supreme Rum Ham, and this is the Building an Indie Business Podcast. All right, so today uh, we're discussing SaaS uh, revenue models. I'm going to be talking about Caproni.fm and uh, how they can make or how they can apply the four different pricing models, uh, tiered pricing, um, pricing by users on the account, um, price by usage, and a fat fee pricing. Um, Okay, so the goal of um, SaaS revenue is to get MM, no, MRR, monthly recurring revenue, right? And they do this by um, charging monthly and sometimes for the year. And it's uh, they will offer usually a discount for the yearly purchase. So for Caproni, they could do um, $20 a month, right? That's $240 a year. And they could offer a discount of 220 if you buy it for the year. And the reason they do this is because that's less credit card transactions. So they're paying less fees on the credit cards, right? So um, they're still saving money. Or no, they're still profiting probably even more on the yearly charge because for every... $20 transaction, that's 3%, right? So they would be saving money if it's just a one once a year transaction, right? So um, price by use is also called tiered pricing. And the way Caproni could do it is they could charge people $20 for having zero to 10 downloads a year or a month. And as soon as someone hits uh, 10,001 downloads, they start charging them um, $22, let's say. Um, And then from 10 to 100,000, they charge the $22 and then 101,000 you go to 25 or 50 whatever that's when you start raising the price so that's tiered pricing and then uh price by use so this would be you have 10,000 downloads total and you're paying five dollars but then as soon as you hit 20,000 downloads you're paying ten dollars um a month to uh store those downloads Right. Um, And then some places, they price by feature set. So, um, like Caproni has uh, their own websites right now. So, if I wanted to customize that website, maybe they charge me like five, ten dollars extra a month to be able to customize the website or for support. I've noticed that other places um, on the free tier, if you don't pay, um, you don't get support. You have to figure things out yourself. So that's another option for in terms of feature set, right? And then there's flat fee pricing. you know, it's just $20 a month, nothing else, right? Um, there's also optional services, like some people will, or not some people, but like some companies will charge like $5 for, I don't know, the, they'll offer you like an ebook and you buy it for 5 maybe $10. So the way Caproni can do that is... 
they write a book or they buy someone's podcasting book. I don't know. I don't know who's written a podcasting book, so where would they get that from, right? Or um, Caproni has the ability to uh, list products on the their podcast website that they've created. Um, so they could charge extra for that. So, um, like $18 plus 2% for every, uh, every product that's sold on their website, right? So that's optional. Okay. So revenue reducers, right? Um, so one revenue reducer is new technology. So there was probably a company that had a monthly service of delivering paper. And when Dropbox came by, all right, I meant to say cloud. When, let, all right, so when Dropbox came by, there, uh, there was probably less money coming in because they started to use Dropbox instead of, you know, printing things out and delivering them. So they, the paper company saw less money coming in, right? So that's how new technology could uh, reduce, reduce revenue. And since I, I've been using Caproni, for examples, um, when the when podcasting was first introduced there was someone in the radio that lost some money i bet right okay um another revenue reducer is churn so in a SaaS model you will definitely have some people that are turning over they'll, they'll start using your product for a couple months and then they'll stop using it Right, and they'll they'll switch to another platform maybe, or just stop using it entirely. This would be churn, uh, right? So that's why you have that's why SaaS companies keep track of the lifetime value of a customer, so that way they know how much money to expect from like the average customer. So the uh, lifetime value of a customer would be how much. Mm, like the average amount of money that customers spend on the platform. So if um, I'm using Caproni at $20 a month, uh, yeah, $20 a month, and the lifetime value of a customer is um, two years, right? The, the average, the lifetime value of a customer is $480, right? Okay. Um, a, another revenue reducer is dead credit cards. So, um, they ask for a credit card when you sign up and that is how you charge money, right? Um, they use that credit card and on occasion, your customers will get new credit cards, but then not realize that with your service, um, the, the service still has the old credit card on hold. That means that you can't charge the customer. And I think even, um, the company has to pay a fee because it was, a NSF non-sufficient funds transaction uh, the transaction bounced so someone has to pay for that in the credit card company's eyes right so that is another one and it's uncool okay and finally the last one that I could think of is uh, transaction fees so I mentioned this every tran credit card transaction the credit card company charges three percent so that is a lot of fees for transactions.
right? And that's why they give a yearly discount because it's less credit card transactions and there are less fees. Uh, we should probably calculate that um, that number. Do you want to do that? Let's do that. Okay, so 240 at 3%, right? That's $7.20. And then if we do, um, what was the one I was going to, okay. So I said $20 times 3%, right? That's 60 cents. Uh, multiply that by 12. Oh, it's the same. Um, okay. So the reason why they offer the discount is because they're getting a lump sum, right? So that's guaranteed money. Um, those customers, even if they stop using the platform, you get their money, right? Um, so yeah, even though it's not the same, you're still getting the full amount for the year that you wouldn't get if they were monthly and they stopped using the platform like six months in, right? Okay. Um, my opinion, businesses have higher switching costs than humans or consumers, let's say. Um, businesses are less likely to move to comp competition or get shiny objects syndrome, right? Because they take so long to make decisions. I remember I was working at a startup and um, I was working on the SEO team for a bit, but not too much. I still barely knew anything about SEO. All I really knew was about backlinks. And um, this was like November. Um, no, this was October. Um, this was October, right? And um, they were deciding which SEO tool to start using to like improve the SEO score. Um, domain authority, not SEO score. And like I left the company the week before Thanksgiving. So the third week of November. So they still hadn't decided which SEO tool to start using. And keep in mind, this was a startup and it took them over a month to decide. Um, that was mostly uh, part of the problem with that company. I don't even know if it's still around. Right. So think about switching tools. It took them a month, over a month to decide. Do you think, how long do you think it would take to decide to move to a different uh, product? So all that bureaucracy um, means like they're not switching from product to product when a new product shows up but with a person they can just decide like hey I don't want to use this tool so let me use this tool um, so that's why I think going business to business in terms of SaaS or just anything um, is a better option and um, humans have less money than businesses so when you have a business to business revenue model you're going to be making more money than humans right and then to make more money in revenue for businesses when you when you have a business to business model um they since they have more money, they're going to pay more. Uh, the, the switching costs are going to be less, right? Um, yeah. So I think going business to business would be better than humans. Although, um, yeah, that, uh, that was going to be my third point, actually. What, what I'm going to say right now is um, when you're paying a higher price, um, you're going to need less customers to make a small, like a bigger amount of money to get, um, to get a thousand dollars in revenue. You're going to need, let's, let's say the price is, uh, so a thousand dollars 
and they're paying $20 a month. Humans, humans. You're going to need 50 humans. But consumers, not humans. Sorry. Um, let's say you charge the businesses double that. You charge them, oh wait, you charge them $50. Uh, all you need is 20 human, 20 companies to make a thousand dollars, right? So it's less people, but, um, less customers, but also it might be more work convincing them to use your product because there's so much bureaucracy to get them to use your product, right? Um, uh, one, another thing about SaaS is that I think some companies are abusing this, uh, pricing model and they're changing their pricing model from a one-time purchase to subscriptions and they're not, uh, updating the product that much. Um, right. So that's why I have, um, I honestly have subscription fatigue. There are products that I don't buy because I only want to pay a one-time fee, and so I don't use the product at all, um, right? And then I think there's also, there's also, so they have my credit card on file, and they just charge it every time my product, or my, my, my subscription needs to be renewed, and I think there's, Another revenue reducer is the fact that some people just forgot about the the fact that they paid for the subscription and they they want to cancel it and the company has to pay for that cancellation because it's a chargeback. So they have to go deal with the credit card company and um, the credit card company is going to charge them for that issue. Right. Um, right. Um, I also like, like the subscription fatigue. Imagine if I charge a subscription for my book and every month I charge like $10, but I only change some grammar errors. Right. I think that's what some companies are doing, like the equivalent of that with their, with their product. Right. Um, I also want to mention the Rob Walling stair step approach because this is kind of the approach I took and this is why I wrote a book and why I probably will write another book for revenue research. So his stair step approach is you're gonna you need to build up to SaaS um, like a SaaS product and the stair step approach is the first ladder or the first step is you have a single one-time payment and so that's like my, like my book right and then you have the second step which is multiple products uh, a book a chrome extension things like that um, multiple one-time payment products and then you have your third step which is you move into SaaS. Right, so this is my, I'm following this stair step approach. Um, okay, that's all I have for this episode. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Bye.